What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, you know, I've got so many Eagle fans, and I appreciate it. You know what? When the Eagle fans don't show up, when your Eagles literally end up being garbage and you guys disappear, you know, it's sad. I miss you guys. I honestly and truly miss you guys. It's actually better for the Eagles to not be completely garbage, just to be competitive. I like it when you guys are competitive. And so... Because you guys are here, you know, I, I want to make sure that I do some content specifically for you Eagles. Because, see, here's the thing. We're all family, okay? We're all content creators, and you need to know the enemy and so on. And, you know, like I said, I just want to spread some love to you guys, okay? Um, my son, Philly 500, although, you know, I, I'm still waiting for my Father's Day present. Still waiting for my Father's Day present. And I have some news that's kind of interesting. Um, Ryan Kerrigan, former Washington Commanders defensive lineman, is actually retiring um, right now. He, he's done. And you're saying probably yourself, well, what does that got to do with the Eagles? Well, some of you may not remember but, you know, I'm like an elephant. An elephant never forgets. I, I know I've got the size and the mass of an elephant and all that. But an elephant never forgets. And I remember with Howie Vision and Philly 500, how excited he was when Washington, excuse me, yeah, when, when they signed Brian Kerrigan. And, in fact, anytime, anytime the Eagles get somebody, it's the greatest move of all time. Seriously. Seriously. You know, when... They drafted Rhaegar, who we found out, Nick Sirianni said he's fighting for a roster spot. You know, a first-round draft pick in his third season is fighting for a roster spot. Not that I have a lot. You know, we, we did have a taco. We did have a taco. We had a soft taco. And basically, Rhaegar is their soft taco. But he's fighting for a roster spot. Uh, I remember <laughs> Philly 500 literally talking about um, – how he did not want Justin Jefferson. Uh, let, let, let's go to the tape. I fire Howie. Fucking fire. Motherfucker. Stupid motherfucker. What an idiot. What an idiot. Dallas has Amari Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver. Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson. He's ass. <laughs> He's stupid. Oh, shit. I fire his ass. Oh. I fire his ass. Oh, boy. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him. Yeah. You. Yeah, I bring that up because we had this situation last year when Ryan Kerrigan was um, brought in by the Eagles. And let's go to the tape here because I, I don't want people to say I'm making stuff up. Wow, the Eagles signed Ryan Kerrigan. Who would have thought we'd ever see that? And who would have seen it coming this year? Uh, you can forget all that talk about, hey, the Eagles only care about winning in two or three years. They don't care about this upcoming season. The signing of Ryan Kerrigan tells us one thing. It tells us the Eagles are coming for the NFC East. 18th pick in the NFL draft. <laughs> hey, make us lunch. Yeah. We're hungry. Yeah, make us lunch, Philly. Dallas still stinks. You're by the way, King Ding back here, and I hope everybody's having a great morning. I hope you guys are doing well. So we got some Eagles breaking news, and I just woke up not too long ago, getting ready to leave, and all of a sudden, out of <laughs> left field, and this is total Howie Roseman, Howie Vision type move. The Eagles go ahead and sign Ryan Kerrigan. I never thought so I happy. would see Ryan so happy. wearing Eagles uniform. It's crazy how things work, but Ryan Kerrigan signs a one-year deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I absolutely love this for this upcoming year. This is a great move 
for this year. And it shows me that the Eagles are not just letting this year go by. They're not just going to not address the cornerback mm. situation. Uh, they have a plan. And they have a plan to be competitive this year and try to win a division. And bringing in Ryan Kerrigan solidifies that thought for me. Uh, I think this is a great move. I think this is a I think, move. I think, I think. I think this is a move that I absolutely love. Yes, Ryan Kerrigan is not the same player he was a few years ago. Yes, his snaps have been dramatically decreased over the years. I mean, look at Washington's defensive line. It's killer. It is, it is a great defensive line. But when you look at the Eagles and you look at what we need, one of the areas of weakness we have is at the defensive end spot because Derek Barnett is a huge question. <laughs> I actually uh, like Josh Sweat better than Derek Barnett. And mm -hmm. I don't think Ryan Kerrigan is coming in to necessarily start over Derek Barnett. He's not coming in for that. He's coming in to be a rotational piece. I think of uh, Chris Long, right, when he was there and how he rotated in with the Eagles was used as a mm. as a pass rush specialist. Chris Long. This is what I see Ryan Kerrigan coming in and doing. Uh, now, when you get Ryan Kerrigan and you got Brandon Graham, you got Derek Barnett, you got Josh Sweat, you got this rotation, uh, you know, staying fresh and rotating it out. I think this is a huge move for the Eagles. This is a move that says to me, yo, NFC East. We are coming to win this division. We can win this division. It's not just Dallas or Washington. We can win this division because you don't make this move if you're not trying to be competitive next year. Now, okay, I, I I understand what you're saying there. I understand what you're saying there, Philly. So how did Ryan Kerrigan? Now, now see, this is a cautionary tale for us. You know, again, Ryan Kerrigan. You know, great years in Washington, been consistent and steady in things. And we, you know, look at guys like this all the time and say, hey, what, we don't want to win. We don't want to win. Why aren't we signing guys? Now, again, sometimes you end up having Odell Beckham, who turned his career around, you know, with, with uh, the Rams and things. You get those from time to time. But often you don't. Now, the Eagles signed him to $2.5 million. Not a whole lot of money. It really was not. I mean, that's in the grand scheme of things, chump change. You know, when you think that they spent $34 million telling Carson Wentz to get out, $2.5 million is chump change. But what did they get for their money? He was active for 16 games. He started two. And he had, wait for it, look, 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 look at the numbers here, three combined tackles. And zero sacks. Now, I'm not making this up. That's just, okay, I know people will say, you're manipulating the statistics. No, I'm not. That's what they got. So when you hear Philly 500 going, oh, it's a great move, man. This is uh, In other news, and again, I'm going to be accused by Eagle fans of making stuff up, okay? And I know you will be butthurt. I know you will be butthurt when I talk about you guys. But see, look, this is Sports Nation, Bleeding Green Nation. This is not a Cowboys thing. I am reading what they are saying. Eagles training camp practice notes. Not the best day for Jalen Hurts in the offense. Okay, hmm. doesn't seem to affect Jalen Hurts there. Da, 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 da. Okay, today marked the second Philadelphia Eagles training camp practice. The season went about 15 minutes longer than Wednesday and clocked in in just under an hour. Okay, so this is their second practice. Jalen Hurts stock report. Just not a good day for Hurts and the, whole, the offense as a whole. Hurts threw two high on short passes attended for Watkins in seven on seven. So short passes are too high. On 11 on 11, it didn't go much better. Hertz was also an accurate on the out route to Dallas Goddard. The tight end only managed to get one outstretched hand on the ball. Hertz threw another pass to a crossing Gilbert, got Goddard, who was uh, off target, wide and low. There was a rep where Hertz ended up checking down to Keith Gainwell in the flat and seemingly having A.J. Brown streaking open down the field. Perhaps Brown was not easily available to Hertz in his progression, but not seeing the entire field has previously been an issue for him. Wait. 
Hurts' worst throw? You mean there was worse ones than the other ones he just? Oh, Hurts' worst throw came when he was picked off by Vontae Maddox. It was unclear what he was even going for on that play. He threw into a crowded area. <laughs> Hurts' best throw came when he connected with Brown on a post down the sideline for a 25 gain or so. Overall, not an encouraging day for quarterback one. Stock down. So, so far, stock day one, even. Day two, stock down. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Come on, Danny. Run it, Danny. Don't fumble it. Don't. Oops. Sorry about that. Sorry, Rashid. Rashid, don't, don't fumble it, Rashid. Okay. Anyway. I just wanted to bring this news to you, Eagle fans, because I know you'll be over here trolling my Cowboys and telling me how much they stink and everything else. So congratulations on Ryan Kerrigan on the retirement. Congratulations on getting out of Washington and Philadelphia unscathed. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys as we are counting down to going back to Cali. Cali to check the team out. Basher is tall. Turpin is small. Micah will wreck your shit. D-Law is back. Williams is fast. And Dak is throwing the deep shit. Diggs with the pick. Curse with the hit. Zeke, he's not done. Going back to Cali to cover the ball.